Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Um, really at home, but uh, still uh, the church is not a building. The church is the people. So uh, we are St. Stephen Baptist Church, the people of God. And uh, we bring you these powerful points of ponder on a daily basis. Uh, we began on Monday talking about the secrets of a champion. And we discovered that the Bible says that Jesus was a champion. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, who? The champion, the champion. Amen. And God has called us all to be champions because when we were born again, we were born to win. Yesterday, I talked about champions conceptualized. They, they get it in their head. They have a conceptualization. Um, they look beyond what is present to see what is possible. We discovered that God has a dream for your life and that God's dream for your life is bigger than anything you can conceptualize. And that God will open up doors for you, arrange positive circumstances for you in order for you to realize those dreams and to see them come true for God's glory. But you have to have enough faith once the door has been opened up to walk through that door. So conceptualization. Let me give you another word uh, that it somewhat rhymes with conceptualization, uh, which is also a part of what it means to be a champion. First, conceptualization, and then secondly, concentration. Concentration. When you are a champion, you don't have scattered energies. You have focused energies. You, you're concentrated. You know, uh, concentrated water is a powerful force. When water falls from the sky, when it rains, that water cannot hurt you. It cannot hurt you. And the reason why is because the water, the drops are scattered. Do you know what would happen if all of the water that falls from the sky was concentrated, somehow was condensed and pulled together so that, let's say you could put it in a hose. Do you know what would happen? It would literally, it would literally create holes on the earth. It would knock trees down. Why? Because the water that is scattered is concentrated. And so often our energies are all over the place. Our mind is all over the place. We're, our activities are all over the place. And we're not focused and concentrated. Many of us think, well, you know, when I was younger, I just was not a good student. And now I've gone back to school. I'm in my 30s and I'm a great student. Listen to me. You were a great student back when you were in middle school. The problem is not that you were not a great student. The problem is you were not mature enough to stay concentrated, to stay focused. And one thing about Jesus is that Jesus was focused. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 again and notice what it says in verse 2 and verse 3. It says, we do this keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaited him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated at, in the place and stop here, the place of honor. That means Jesus won. He stayed focused on what he was trying to achieve. And that was the place of honor besides God's throne. If you want a place of honor, it is critically important that you not allow anything to distract you, that you stay focused, stay focused. Now go back to that second verse again. Let's look at it one more time. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. What does it mean to keep our eyes on Jesus? What he is saying here is this, is that usually when this is interpreted, we think of Jesus as our help. Looking to the King, the King James says, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and finisher of our faith. So looking unto Jesus gives the idea that we look unto Jesus as help. But that's not really what this writer is saying. Although Jesus is our help, that's not what he's saying here in this verse. There's other verses which tell us that Jesus is our help. But here he is saying Jesus is not our help. There's another H word, not help, but hero. He's saying that Jesus is our hero. You know, they used to have a commercial back in the 80s and 90s, like, I want to be like Mike. But this is saying, no, I want to be like Jesus. He's the champion. And he is our hero in the sense that Jesus gives us a model of what champions do. 
And what it is saying is that there were things in Jesus's way. What was in Jesus's way was the cross, but he endured it. And the shame of being associated with the cross, but he endured it. And what this is saying is that champions, Jesus being the champion, must be willing to endure some things. Sometimes you have to endure mockery. You have to endure people who don't believe in you. You have to endure the lack of money, the lack of resources, uh, the, the, the fatigue of waiting for something to come to pass. He endured that, and that's the sign of a champion. He stayed focused on what he was trying to achieve, and that was, we're told in verse 2, the place of honor. So he's not only our help, but Jesus is our hero. Now, what does it mean to stay focused? Let me give you the my acrostic for focus. Here it is. A focused person does the following. We're going to break down the word focus. F, first things first. First things first, uh, you know, don't make, uh, don't give primary energy to secondary uh, activities. Give primary energies to primary activities. Whatever it is God is calling you to do, prioritize it. First things first, everything else is second. Oh, other things second. Once you know what your priorities are, then you you list your priorities. You get those priorities in, in, in order of importance. First things first, other things second. C, watch this. Cut out the unnecessary. Cut out the unnecessary. Some things are not bad, but they're just unnecessary, and they divert attention and energy away from you staying concentrated on what God is calling for you to do. You unify around your purpose whatever the purpose god has called you to unify all your energy your time your money your resources everything around those purposes and s stick to it don't give up until you go up or until you do like jesus and that's amen the seed of honor Amen. Listen again, I repeat that when God called you and when God saved you, God saved you because God wants to bring glory to his name and God wants to give you some good things in life so that you can bring glory to his name. So the people who knew you back in the day will look at you and say, how did you do it? And you can tell them how God changed your life, changed your values, helps you to move from conceptualization to concentration to stay focused to achieve great things. It's amazing what God can do when we yield ourselves to God's will. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people today and help us, oh God, to implement the focus acrostic into our life. Thank you for conceptualization. Now let us have concentration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me again today for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Uh, email us here at St. Stephen Church, newstart at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you. Look, Bible study is tonight, uh, and I hope you'll join us tonight uh, at SSC Live TV. Start with us at 6.30. We will start at 6.30 with Sister Crystal Goodner Spratt and the pre-worship experience where we dialogue about important issues in our in our church and community. So tune in at 6.30 and then at 7 o'clock of the actual Bible study and the teaching of the word will take place. So I look forward to seeing you tonight. But until then, you have a great day the rest of the day. You champion you. And don't forget, during COVID-19, don't be a chump, be a champ. Remember to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.